Hey y'all, what's up? Uh, I'm back. Uh, I know it's been a little while. Um, I'm recording this very early in the morning. I'm trying something new. Um, I notice I always have like a lot of motivation and energy to kind of want to like dive into this stuff in the morning and after work I'm just kind of exhausted especially with it being like 118 degrees out here in Vegas so um, I thought I'd try and make a, a video in the morning um, I feel pretty good um, I have to get ready for work so I've got about maybe half an hour to make this video um, but uh, yeah um, as you can probably hear in the background I've got my flight sim up and running it's playing its lovely music and uh, today I'm going to make a video about um, traffic patterns at an airport. Um, now I believe this one has an ATC, um, but it shouldn't change this too much. Um, and I'm actually, and this is, this is something I was thinking about doing for a while ever since I started getting into this uh, stuff. Um, the Air Force uh, sent me to Texas for a week to learn how like the basics of flight and uh, just to you know prep me to potentially become a pilot in the future um, unfortunately um, I wasn't able to do that I wasn't selected for some of that stuff but I still love the opportunity and uh, you know maybe one day all this flight simming and stuff I can maybe use some of my uh, military benefits to pursue getting a pilot's license and things like that in the future which would be super fun and cool um, but what I'm going to be utilizing is this book right here um, so this book is actually made by the DOT the Department of Transportation the airplane flying handbook it actually like I was afraid I couldn't use this because I thought it was maybe used by the school that I attended but no this is this is the FAA I'm pretty sure the FAA it doesn't have any like copyright type stuff on here um, granted it's printed by some other um, shop but um, I don't believe that they can like copyright something the FAA publishes for pilots everywhere and you know um, United States and I believe the FAA rules apply to other countries as well sometimes but um, one of the things that I think I found the most fun uh, thing to learn and probably the most difficult thing for me to learn uh, granted it was also um, my flight instructor at the time wasn't they weren't allowed to let us do some of this stuff so we kind of had to just watch him do it and he would um, but yeah uh, so this is considered a um, uh, traffic pattern um, specifically a VFR traffic pattern that's a uh, uh, Victor Fox Romeo uh, which stands for if I believe visual flight rules um, the other one is IFR which is instrument flight rules uh, essentially this is if you have good enough weather to where you have visibility like I think it's four miles or more or something like that um, and uh, you're basically if all your avionics in your in your cockpit were to go out you could still fly the plane based on what you're seeing outside of the window um, this is like the thing that they teach first and foremost from what I understand in uh, most pilot schools even though um, most airliners are actually all airliners uh, fly on IFR um, rules you still need to know these things in case something happens and you need to an emergency land the plane somewhere using visual flight rules or something like that um, so specifically um, the the maneuvers I'm going to be working on that I remember having the hardest time with is in this page here so um, I'm not sure how easy that is to see uh, I should have brought this up on my computer screen so I could just you know show it on stream but anyway uh, this is known as a traffic pattern um, and it doesn't really matter which one I'm doing the right or the left um, I'll kind of explain it when I'm in the game doing it but essentially you're doing this like big tr um, rectangular circular pattern um, around the airport and it's going in the direction that you would land um, and essentially it's a good way for um, if there's multiple aircraft at an airport they can all kind of do this circling it's kind of like a roundabout for an airport and um, the if there is an ATC they can be like okay aircraft you know whatever whatever you're next to land go ahead and exit the traffic pattern 
come down on your um, um, on your approach and land your plane and they can kind of time it they can be like okay you're next and now you're next and you're next and so on and so forth um, if it's a uncontrolled airfield um, hopefully all of the pilots would in that general area can communicate with each other I believe um, these local airports might have like a, um, a frequency that they would use for you know pilots to talk to one another um, I think that's I don't know where that might be I think there might be like a uh, uh, when you're doing your flight plan and you're looking at the local area they might have like okay all local traffic use such and such megahertz you know um, to communicate with one another and basically you guys can all be like your own ATC you can all be like hey aircraft whatever whatever I'm right behind you like I'm half a mile behind you you know in the traffic pattern um, if you're ready to land go ahead and land first and then I'll circle around and then land next um, it's all about communication I mean that's probably one of the big things that prevent most um, uh, aviation uh, disasters and things like that so um, but anyway uh, let's see if I can read this through my camera but um, you have four different sections you have um, the final which I also learn like fighter pilots like so the final is when you're actually going to be landing right here um, now in the traffic pattern you can actually not go into a final and just fly directly above the, the um, runway that you're going to be flying or that you're going to be landing at. Um, what I learned from my fighter pilot um, pilots that I, because I maintain aircraft, is that uh, if you're flying over the runway and not necessarily landing at it that particular moment, uh, I think they called that the initial. Um, I think you can also call it the upwind leg as well. Um, and then when you cross over here, that's the, um, the crosswind. So you would be going left over the crosswind. And then this leg is called the downwind, um, which makes sense because you're going with the wind. And then this down here, they call the base leg. So this is like the, the point at which you're like, okay, you're gonna decide if you're gonna land or not. You know, um, what's good about this? So you can either decide like at this point or this point if you're gonna land. Um, and what you would do is you'd use your visual to be like, okay, I can see the runway. I don't see anything in, in, um, in the way. There's no incursions, there's no like traffic on there. There isn't an airplane taking off or landing currently. And you can decide, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put my flaps down, uh, throttle down and start your glide. Uh, down all the way around here uh, it gives you plenty of time well um, should give you like somewhere around like a minute or so um, during that glide to be like just constantly keeping an eye on the runway to make sure nothing happens and if something does happen you can do what's known as a go around and that's where you just put your flaps back up you throttle up you get back up to altitude um, now doing all this without an autopilot is hard I'm not gonna lie so um, I've got about 20 maybe 30 minutes um, before I need to end this video so let's see if I can do maybe one or two of these patterns um, let me switch over to my game here and there it is all right good um, I have decided I'm gonna go back to Tennessee uh, it is currently 711 in the morning there um, and I actually got a free update for the Shelbyville Municipal Airport um, I guess they do a lot of flight schools out there for the um, university known as Middle Tennessee State University MTSU um, so they actually teach people how to be pilots at this particular one um, and uh, yeah, there was like a, a free update for it, which was pretty cool. Um, I was able to find, hopefully it shows up okay. Um, this is my first time um, installing a mod from a uh, website, um, the flightsim.to website. Uh, shout out to those guys for, I mean, they, they put out a lot of cool content on there. Um, this is also gonna be one of my first flights where I've attached my my stick you can't see it on camera but my stick over here on my right side I've attached it to my desk 
Um, and then I have my throttle over here, which you can't see around the microphone, but yeah. Um, and try to get it all set up okay. Um, it's, yeah, uh, <laughs> working on it. Um, and uh, yeah, um, well, let's just freaking give this a shot. Uh, hopefully everything here works okay. I'm gonna turn that off. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, launch her up. I'm gonna be still flying my Cessna 172 because uh, it's what I'm comfortable with. And I think if I can, you know, I'd, I'd like to work on perfecting my, my piloting skills in a very simple aircraft first. And then um, as I feel comfortable with that, I can then maybe upgrade to, you know, like something like this. I think this is the Grand Caravan. Um, bigger planes like that, that you can, um, a little faster, maybe a little bit more difficult, Sierra, things like Yankee, that. India, so, Alpha, Papa, Papa, all right, Lima, so here's Echo. the Shelbyville Municipal three, Airport. Out, um, oh, they didn't even put me on the runway. That's kind of cool. Oh, maybe they did. I can't tell. Um, yeah, it does look like they put, like, I can't tell. It looks like they maybe put some new markings on there. I haven't flown out of this with the stock, so I don't know if this is the stock or if my thing worked or not. I don't know why my person is getting on the grass, because I don't think this is a grass airfield. Okay. Alright, AI. Um, oh, they're just turning around, I guess. That's weird. Anyway, let's see if we can get this going. Let's go to ready to fly. All right, cool. So I'm at the um, right here. Throttle's all the way down right now. Um, but what I want to do first and foremost is, all right, so it looks like I have, you can see here, this is uh, lined up with the runway. So it looks like uh, this runway is basically zero. Um, I'm gonna make sure my heading bug is good to go. So, perfect, heading bug is there. Um, can we see a windsock anywhere? Cause I'm kind of curious what the wind is like right now. I can't see any, any windsock. Uh, there's a bus, those are the pipper lights. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking that maybe my mod didn't work because it doesn't look like there's really anything here. Um, so that's okay. Let's go ahead and reset my view. All right. Um, and I wish there was a way that I could put in the flight planner here, like my own, um, what do you call it? My own, uh, let's see. Or I could show um, what the traffic pattern should be like. Uh, let's see, maybe I can select an approach and maybe just get the stick out of my way. There we go. All right. It's visual. Okay, so it doesn't look like I can put an approach in like that. So that's clear. Clear. Maybe, uh, maybe it's under arrival. Select an arrival. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's okay. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, so this circle is now set to one nautical mile, um, which is a, what I think should be a pretty appropriate um, size of a traffic pattern that I want to use here. So, all right, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and reset this. Uh, let's go ahead and release my parking brake. And 
Keep the throttle up. I'm going to get up to 55 knots and roll on out. Looks like uh, I'm going in the wrong direction of the wind. There's about a seven knot tailwind right now, which is not good for this particular. So here's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to see if I can get myself up to altitude. All right, so there's a few things I didn't do. Let me see if I can reset. Let's restart. Yeah. All right, so. Some more, a little bit of homework I should have done. All right, so I should have saw what the altitude is at the airfield. It's 800. Um, from what I understand, your traffic pattern, um, the universal kind of accepted thing that most people do is um, their traffic pattern is about 1,000 feet above the airfield. So I would need, to, I would probably, as a good pilot, I would write down, oh, I'm going to be landing here. It's 800 nautical uh, or 800, you know, feet above sea level, and um, so as you can see, like it says 780 there. If I hit B, I think it'll just change it to 800 because, uh, yeah, barometric pressure is 29.95. Um, so I would want to fly as close as I can to 1800 feet while I'm doing this traffic pattern. It's another thing that makes this very difficult. Now I should, um, and I might just do this. I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to just taxi down to the other end of the runway um, and take off in the other direction because um, with the wind being at my tail, that's why I was looking for the windsock earlier, um, I should be taking off and landing um, instead of at this angle, I should be, uh, I think it's probably 18. So let's go ahead and take the parking brake off. Go ahead and see if I can taxi my way over to the other end. Got about 15 minutes. Maybe I can do one traffic pattern. Either that or I just need to restart this and go to the other end. I don't know. Uh, maybe I can be a little speedster here. runway here okay getting a little fast here about 20 miles an hour slower down a little bit to this end of the runway. And this is honestly where I would probably um, tune into the ATIS, which is the, uh, um, I don't remember what it stands for. It's in my book, but. Um, You'd basically be able to get like tra um, your uh, wind information and things like that and weather. Um, looks like it's a nice, beautiful day out in Tennessee. So I wish I were there right now with my my wife. But uh, no. all right, here we go. Yep, looks like this is runway 18. Now normally you would tower in. Um, 
also normally I don't have my camera set up right now so I can't really check but this is also where you would normally go ahead and uh, um, make a look up and down the runway and make sure there's nobody in your way all right so let's go ahead and get lined up as good as I can here So we're going to go ahead and get my heading bug set to there. Uh, why isn't it doing it? H. Okay. Uh, let's just go ahead. Maybe. There we go. All right. Heading bug. So 18. This makes this nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to uh, take off, do a traffic pattern, and... Uh, see how good I do. Uh, unfortunately they haven't implemented in the flight sim yet where I can like look at what my you know breadcrumb trail is but there's a mod that I'm looking at I'm gonna see if I can get it installed so I can do more of these and I can see like my progression see how much tighter my circles are and how much better my turn radiuses are and things like that. So without much further ado let's go ahead and you know, throttle up and Let's go ahead and do this thing. This should be a lot easier to take off this time since I'm going to be going against the wind rather than, yeah. Alright. Crossing 50. Pulling up. Let's stay on the center line. There we go. Oh, yeah. Eight knots of headwind there. Oh, gosh. Calm her down, calm her down. Try and stay centered over the runway. There we go. Alright, not my greatest, not my greatest, but that's okay. And we want to get up to, so I'm going to start my crosswind here. I'm thinking 10 degrees is pretty good. And we want to continue. Kilo Sierra Yankee India traffic Cessna and Alpha Papa Papa Lima Echo do this 1 until mile I get south to 1400 feet inbound to land runway 36. Uh 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 Wait until I get about a mile out. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my turn here to the downwind. Slowly level out as soon as I hit there. Perfect. So I'm on my downwind. Again, this is where you would normally look out your window and see the airfield. I'm going to just trust my avionics right now. And yeah, this runway isn't exactly at 0 and 18. It's a little bit off. That's okay. Alright. And crossing the end of the runway on my thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do my base leg. Oh, and I have way too much altitude. Man, yeah, this is where you need to like really work on all of your awareness. I'm going too fast. Let's go ahead and bring that down. Okay, now I'm on my base leg. Kind of overdid that, trying to, let's see, let me put some trim in, because holy smokes, I got way too high. Let's go ahead and start my upwind leg. Line it up. Oof. Yeah, that was not my best work. Let's see if we can get back on track here. Um, I don't know why it has those little markers. That's supposed to show me my glide slope if I were coming in on the other end. Um, I don't remember turning that on. It's kind of cool though. Um, a little like visual like helper thing there. 
All right, so I'm almost to 1800. So maybe I can bring up the trim just a little bit. See if I can get back over the top of the airfield here. There we go. Try and get my trim set up to where. kind of maintain level flight without having to put too much pressure on the stick here. I'm losing too much altitude. Let's bring it back up a little bit and let's go ahead and start our crosswind. It's like uh, I need to put some rudder pressure. Oof. a lot of altitude there. Okay, that's okay. So we can bring it back up. That's why we practice. I think I need to give her the beans a little bit here. A little bit off. That's okay. Looks like the flight sim wants my traffic pattern to be a little bit out further that might make sense that's okay so let's go ahead and get to my downwind here since I'm going to be downwind I should be able to bring the throttle back down a little bit it's about three degrees four three degrees trim here. I get more altitude. I can hear my flight instructor in my head right now like your altitude's too low. Let's see. Let's get rid of the beans a little bit here. So I need to get back up to about 1800. I also wonder if I can, if I have this already set to the localizer. It looks like I do. That's good. All right. So I think I'm far enough out from the end of the runway that I can start my base leg again. So let's go ahead and do that. Getting back up to about 1800. I think my speed's getting a little too low. Let's get rid of the beans again here. Try and keep it straight and level. Wow, 15 knots of wind. Okay, that also explains why I'm getting pushed out so hard. Okay, let's see if we can get over the top of the runway here. That was a little better. since I'm going to do one more go around. It's about 5.30 my time. I've got to start getting ready here soon. So I'm going to do one more go around. Let's see if we can't. Yeah, the, trying to trim it out is a little difficult for some reason. It's okay. Now I'm gaining a little too much. Let's go ahead and slow her down. Cool. That wasn't too bad. I'm going to try and land it after this one. See if I can do like a 180 glide. With that much wind, I don't know if I want to try and do a 180 glide. I think I'll try a 90 degree glide. We'll see. Alright. So are. Uh, I lost a lot of altitude again, damn it. Okay, now that I'm... Go ahead and get on my 
crosswind. Go. Okay. Oh man. Maintaining altitude. I I am horrible at that right now. That's okay. That's why we practice. That's why we practice. I've got to keep telling myself that. Scanning my eyes a little better. Okay, keeping my altitude a little better that time. Now I've got that big old tailwind of 12 knots behind me, a little bit of a crosswind. That's okay. Let's see if we can keep that altitude about the same. All right, not bad, not bad. All right. Cool. a little bit of altitude about 900 above that's okay I think there we go we're gonna try this landing approach here so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it let's see if we can glide her in actually I wouldn't cut it there let's, let's get her back up a little bit here Especially with so much headwind. All right, so there we go. I think cutting it right about here would be pretty good. All right, so we're gonna come down and around, try and get my eyes on the end of the runway here. Should be in my view here shortly. Let's see. Yep, there it is. I am way too high. That's okay. We're gonna throw in some flaps. Flaps now. Flare. Oh, that was a little too much of a flare. Oof, that was a little rough. That's okay. Again, this is why we practice. Oh, I don't know if this is like an just a little grass taxiway, huh? All right, that's cool. All right. Looks like I've got my ground crew over here ready to welcome me in. Let's go ahead and Yeah, my plane does not like going through this grass or gravel or whatever the heck it is. Man, and I gotta adjust that throttle a little bit because it has like detents, so it doesn't really, it's not smooth like I would want it to be, especially for a Cessna that you can kind of adjust it all you want. I might have to work on that a little bit. Um, okay, where were those guys at? They were over here, right? That, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna make my own parking space, shall we? I'm going to assume I own this hangar right here, and we'll just go ahead and park around it in front of the hangar door. All right, cool. Go ahead and cut the throttle. Just kind of bring her in. Uh, let's see, I think. There we go. That seems pretty good. All right, uh, go ahead and give her part. There we go. Cool, excellent. And let's go ahead and shut her all down. I just do this the wrong way, but I'm just gonna turn all my avionics off. There we go, cool. There we are. Um, 
pretty fun. I, th I got some things I need to work on. Um, but uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to probably post this later this afternoon. Um, but it was a nice little fun 35 minute thing. Um, I hope you all learned something. I know I am uh, definitely still learning. I think that's something that I enjoy the most about doing this flight sim stuff is um, it brings me back to what was one of my more enjoyable moments in the Air Force when they put me in a plane and were like, hey, we're going to teach you how to do some of this stuff. Um, I didn't feel like I had enough time. Um, you know, I mean, pilots have thousands of hours of experience doing this kind of stuff, and I only had about four hours in the cockpit and another four hours in a simulator. So the more hours I can get in on this game, and uh, granted, I know it's not... Um, the most ultra realistic thing you can possibly do to learn how to fly but um i think it helps familiarize you and it helps you learn the content that i mean there's a lot that you need to learn to become a pilot um and it makes it fun to learn so yeah um if you have any questions about traffic patterns uh if you have any suggestions for me please leave a comment um if you enjoy this content if you enjoy watching these or you just enjoy me as a person uh, feel free to uh, give me a subscription um, and a thumbs up or maybe a thumbs down if you didn't like it that's fine too um, but it all helps you know helps me get noticed on YouTube's algorithm and all that kind of stuff and uh, um, I'd like to keep making this kind of content for y'all um, as you can see uh, Pepper is back here my co-pilot she's sleeping um, she's she's not a morning pup like she's a morning pup for like a good you know minute or two while I get excited she gets excited that I'm up and I'm, I'm going and then she's like you know what I'm just gonna take a little nap she's a good girl um, so anyway y'all uh, thank you for watching um, I hope to see y'all on the next one bye